Hey y'all, it's Wildcat6305 coming to you from Ike's Treehouse outside of Augusta, Georgia. Just wanted to make this quick video on or on game aids. Uh, it kind of be similar to you know some some people's essential customizations type things. Um, I'm not really going to talk. I'm not going to call it essential customizations. Just what we're using right now at this point in time for game aids. Um, first up these task force boards, blow up boxes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I guess they're task force boards. If they were made into the map, they'd be blow up boxes. But here, I made these up myself. Uh, I just kind of Googled some uh, World War II pictures and uh, this is what I came up with and threw it, threw it together on the computer. And each one of them has a corresponding uh, piece here. I just took a washer and uh, just put some sticker on that uh, to, to match up the numbers and just printed this out on sticker paper and mounted it onto a piece of project board and cut it out. Uh, so here we've got some a big battleship and a picture of an aircraft carrier, a German tanks, some American fighters or bombers there. Uh, and then we got another uh, got a Sherman here and then this Soviet picture. Uh, before I'd made those I'd made these uh, just kind of classic card deck suits. Uh, these are kind of oddball sizes because um, I made them from scrap project board I had and it kind of works out you can you know mix and match uh, depending on what uh, what units you're putting on it. The other thing we use is Sired Bloods uh, custom cards uh, and so these are really good, very well done. Uh, they have a, on each card there's a political situation followed by the national objectives. And some nations that have special rules such as Soviets and Japanese, there's a Soviet Japanese card and the Japanese have a kamikaze card to explain that. And it's just a really good, really good game aid. So in the middle of the game you can just go refer to those cards and not have to go flipping through the rule book. Uh, then also these are just kind of some game aid cards. I don't I forget what he called them, uh, but but these are good. Just they cover different things: convoy disruption, anti-aircraft, amphibious assaults, bombing raids, and then just a unit uh, unit stat card here, where so you don't have to come over here to the board and be hunkered down and trying to squint and read all this. You can just pick this card up and read it, and just well organized on there. And then also a combined armed card, I uh, like to keep those two handy. Uh, I've actually printed out a couple of extra of these to put next to the mobilization zone uh, to mimic uh, Young Grasshopper's uh, board a little bit there because I, I like the way that looked of, of having the combined arm stats next to that. So when we lay out our out of box battle board down here, we can have that close by and handy. Other things we have, uh, we use the anti-air guns uh, out of the 1942 version, of, well, spring 1942, Axis and Allies. We, we use that for uh, house rule for rocket bases um, in our technology and development, and I'll have a video later on, on that. Uh, but I, we, we don't tie them to the air bases. We just felt like having them kind of be a complete separate entity and here, uh, the naval bases and air bases that are out of box, the so G40 second edition. Uh, and, and the major industrial and minor industrial complexes, uh, along with the uh, pieces that are from Spring 40 and the tokens that are from uh, Europe, Europe and uh, Pacific 40 second edition. Along with uh, these risk, these tokens that are from Risk and Risk, you mark your cities with these, and I've noticed a lot of players use these to mark their major industrial complexes. Uh, another piece that came out of that game, of the same Risk game, I think it was like a 2008 Risk game, are these army pieces. And here, they they just had a one with three chevrons on there, and then one with one chevron. So that was denoting one in three armies. Well, we like to use these for movement trackers. So you move to plane, you move to a strategic bomber, 
three spaces and he has three moves left, we put this arrow behind him so we know how many movements he has left um, going into the movement uh, or the non-combat moves. When he's out of movement points, we just simply flip it over. Uh, just kind of empty and hollow, so he has none left. But then we also, they're fairly good. You can stack them on top of each other, so two or four, you know, whatever it is you do. So uh, we really like that because a lot of us are new to G40, and we need all the help we can get to keep ourselves straight. And also have these Monopoly pieces. Uh, I got the big ones from Historical Board Gaming. Uh, we use the red ones to denote capitals and the green to, to denote uh, victory cities. And last but not least, we have Sire Blood's Custom Cache. And we really enjoy that. Um, I, I actually didn't print them out fancy. They're, these are actually just printed on copier paper, but I did get them printed out uh, by a laser printer. So these are these are pretty good. Uh, I would suggest getting those taken to uh, you know Office Max or Staples or some type of printer, uh, some some place that prints it. You could probably go with a higher grade paper quality. I just figured I'd try it out on this, and so far no real big deal. Um, we keep a I keep a rubber band around it. It's probably not the best idea idea around each denomination, but so far it really hasn't messed them up too bad but I'm sure they won't last forever and we can get something else. Uh, we also just have a tray of dice and then the chips here we just we use the out of box uh, color denotation uh, color scheme for out of box for our chips so a gray one, green three, red five and then uh, we got some chips from historical board gaming we use blue as ten and orange is damage tokens, so for each damage token, that's minus one. Um, so, but everything works out pretty good for us. Uh, this hallway is a uh, ever changing customization, trying to keep up with everything and finding what works best for our group. And uh, that, that's the thing I'd say about customizations you got to find what works best for, for you and your players and, and just have fun with it. But, Hope all your rolls are one.